millions, millions. But each year of suicide, not because they want to, because they feel like they have no place to go. They feel like everyone is out to get them. They feel like they are worthless. Well, you're not worthless and you're not alone. Here to tell about his experience, please welcome Mr. Kevin Haynes to explain what it is and what he felt that day when he jumped over the road. Of the Golden Gate Bridge. We have lost far too many lives traveling the path to this day. Since 1937, over 2,000 people have died at the Golden Gate Bridge. I feel lucky to be alive every single day. Of the thousands that have died off the Golden Gate Bridge, I am of the 1% who have survived. So I was born on drugs and premature. And then I bounced around from home to home. Nobody wanted to keep me because I was sick. And I got lucky. I landed in the home of Patrick and Deborah Hines. I had a great childhood. I thought growing up that everything's going to be great. And then at 17, it, it all came crashing down. If you can imagine feeling that everyone around you is out to get you, trying to hurt you, and trying to kill you, and you believe that to be the truth. From the extreme paranoia, I exhibited symptoms of mania. From the mania came the hallucinations, both auditory and visual. And so with that and the bipolar disorder, I just was spiraling out of control. I vividly remember writing my suicide note. People don't get it. Like, I, I thought I was a burden to everyone who loved me. Uh, because that's what my brain told me, because that's how powerful your brain is. I got off the bus. I walked slowly down the walkway of the Golden Gate Bridge. You know, people rode by me, drove by me, walked by me, and a woman approached me, and she said, will you take my picture? She said thanks, and she walked away. It was that moment I just said, nobody cares. The reality was that everybody cared. I just couldn't see it. I ran forward, and using my two hands, I catapulted myself into free fall. What I'm about to say is the exact same thing that 19 Golden Gate Bridge jump survivors have also said. The millisecond my hands left the rail, it was an incident. And 
I remember thinking, no one's gonna know that I didn't wanna die. In four seconds I fell, 75 miles an hour, 25 stories, and I hit the water. I, I was in the most physical pain I had ever experienced. I have ever experienced. The Coast Guard was amazing. Uh, he was just so freaked out that I was alive that he just dove in and brought me on board. The guy said, do you know how many people we pull out of this water that are already dead? And I said, no, and I don't want to know. The guy put his hand on my forehead and said, kid, you're a miracle. My father took one step into the hospital room, and I looked up at him, and I said, Dad, I'm sorry. And he said, no, Kevin, I'm sorry. And if you think about it, both of our immediate reactions were guilt, guilt that didn't belong to either of us. And even though I didn't die, I caused people a great deal of grief and pain. Just the day of my attempt still sits within them today. I asked my father if he still feared my death by suicide. He said, every time the phone goes off, his first inclination is Kevin alive. I had that impact on my dad. So after the jump, uh, the road to recovery was pretty long. I had seven psych ward stays in the next 11 years. I, I still have all the symptoms I ever had. Mania, depression, psychosis, hallucinations, all that's still there. I just know how to cope with it and I know how to beat it. I built a support network over these years of treatment so that I wouldn't be fighting this alone. So like, it's okay not to be okay. It's not okay not to ask for someone to back you up. To the families who, who live with the loss or losses of loved ones, they didn't do that to hurt you or destroy your life. They, they took their lives because they were struggling and in a great deal of emotional and mental pain. Suicide, mental illness, and addiction are the only diseases that we blame the person for perpetually. But people die from suicide just like they die from any other organ diseased. Today, no matter the pain I'm in, no matter the struggles I experience, I do believe that life is the greatest gift we've ever been given. And if you're suffering mentally, don't wait like I did sitting in denial for so long. Because recovery happens, I'm living proof. It's not easy, not easy for anyone to go through. Mania and depression, oh. PTSD. Those are the biggest ones. Those are what biggest people. If you're a friend of someone who is struggling, if you can see your friend struggling, reach out and ask, are you okay? That little statement can go a long way. That one little, are you okay, save somebody's life. At, don't be afraid to ask them. Have you ever thought about suicide? Ever plan about suicide? If they say yes to either one, refer them to a trusted adult or have them call 
suicide hotline. At 1-800-273-TALK. Again, that's 1-800-273-8255. My name is Noel Bell. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'm praying and hoping that you guys are you okay? One of your friends. Listen. Give them a shoulder to cry on. Give them a hug. Comfort them. You never know. Somebody may be Be there for your friends. Don't wait till tomorrow. Get it now.